Hey family, my name is Derek Delane and I serve as one of the pastors here at Proclamation Church. If this is your first time with us, I wanna say thank you so much for joining us. And my hope is that so far, you have felt so welcome joining us here today. Before we get into the sermon, we typically share a few things that are happening at the church and want you to be in the know. Now, I'm going to do that, but I also want you to know that I'm going to be giving an update on what's happening here in our family. So, this video may be a little longer than normal. First off, welcome back to our college students. Listen, summertime feels a little off when you're gone, but we are so glad that you're back. And please know, we're praying for you this semester. To welcome you back and get you connected to other college students and to the life of the church here, we want to invite you to come hang out with me and a few others at Game Terminal on September 9th. We're going to meet here at the church at 6 p.m., carpool over, then play some games, eat some food, have some fun. So invite your friends, let's make this thing happen. Second, I mentioned this at the end of each of our services last weekend, but next Sunday we will not have a Sunday gathering because we are recognizing what we call here at Proclamation Church our rhythms of rest. Rhythms of rest allows us the opportunity to simply Sabbath or stop and reflect on what the Lord has done in our midst and how we can come back refreshed and ready to jump back in on what's happening in the life of our church. I'll send out a guide on best practices while you rest next Sunday, but before I do that, let's acknowledge what the Lord has done in the life of proclamation so far this year that we can spend some time thanking Him for during our rhythm of rest. First, I want to give you guys a quick financial update. Last November, we shared with you all that we were expecting our giving to be at $480,000 for the year, knowing that we needed to be at least $320,000 by this time. Well, as of last week, our giving was at $351,195. Can we put our hands together for the faithful generosity of God's people here at Proclamation Church? Here's what's so dope about this. Number one, we aren't even in September yet and we have exceeded what we are anticipating. But what's even cooler, that number doesn't even include any external gifts. If you include external gifts, we are currently at $408,000, which means we are well on our way to $480,000. Now, of course, we've done some spending and things, and we'll fill you guys in on that budget meeting in November that we have. But I share that so you guys will be encouraged. You understand the call to be a steward of your treasure, particularly to the mission of God here at Proclamation Church. And we always tell you that if you're a first time guest with us, we never want people to feel compelled to give. But for those who call Proclamation Church home, your giving, your generosity allows us to continue to advance in the mission of following Jesus and making him known in Nashville and to the world. Just, just stop and think about it, okay? When we say Nashville into the world, we're talking about how we're able to give upwards to $10,000 to church planners like Alan in Nairobi, Kenya, or Peter who is moving with his family in just a few days to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. When we say here in Nashville, we're able to set aside more money to buy supplies for the teachers and students at Glenview Elementary, and we're able to minister to other local partners through Serve 615. Your generosity is never in vain, and we thank you so much for that. Speaking of Serve 615, between Kids Week and Serve 615, we saw 90 people serving these events. When I stop and think about the level of involvement I've seen this year from you all, it makes me so happy and so proud because you guys are continuing to demonstrate that you understand the call to use your gifts to see the flourishing of our city. Something else we want to celebrate is the continued growth in Little Proclaimers. Did you know that between Kids Week and our regular Sunday gatherings this year, we've seen over 60 new children be impacted by the ministry of Little Proclaimers? Listen, don't clap yet, okay? Because I'm not done. Can we do something? If you serve in Little Proclaimers and you are in this service, can you stand up? Seriously, right now, stand up because I'm, I'm running out of time, okay? Can we put our hands together now for these servant leaders? Awesome. Listen, Simon says keep standing. Don't sit down yet. When we say that we want to partner with parents to help raise the next generation of disciple makers, we take that seriously. Little Proclaimers isn't childcare or babysitting. It's intentional discipleship of our little ones here at the church. And these individuals who are standing are leading the way in that. If you're wondering what it looks like to partner with parents by serving Little Proclaimers, speak to one of these guys. Let them share with you the stories of these little ones understanding the gospel more and more, to see the light bulbs come on for elementary age kids who are beginning to read and understand the Bible for themselves. They would love to talk to you, especially Wilhelms, okay? Because he loves to talk. All right, I'm kidding. You guys can sit down now. 
Those are the things to celebrate and thank God for during our rhythm of rest. But what about what we should be asking him for? Well, from our last family meeting, I want to show you this graph again, okay? And how I think you should begin praying and asking what your part is here at the church. Our prayer is that every single person who calls Proclamation Church home will find themselves committed and commissioned. What do I mean by that? Well, in the book of Mark, we see crowds mentioned nearly 40 times before chapter 10. Here's the thing though, crowds form audiences for Jesus' teaching, they are the object of his compassion. However, being a part of the crowd around Jesus is not the same thing as being committed or commissioned by Jesus. What I love though is that Jesus still met the crowd. For us at Proclamation Church, we too want to meet the crowd, meet the people. We want to minister to people, but we also want to see those people move from being in the crowd to being committed and commissioned. Well, how is that happening? We want the crowd to move to being connected first. This is where our members come in. If you're a member here at Proclamation Church, every weekend is an opportunity to meet someone new. If you ever see someone sitting by themselves in our gatherings, that should concern us, and we need to do whatever we can to make them feel connected to our family. Have a meal with someone you don't know, invite them out to lunch after church, or invite them to your family group. When we do that, the crowd begins to feel connected to this local body, and the way we've seen this is through the Weekender. This year alone, we have seen 68 people attend our Weekender event. Every time we host a Weekender, our hope is that people will want to commit themselves to Jesus and the mission of following Jesus and making Him known here at Proclamation Church. So, what does being committed look like then? Well, being committed here at Proclamation Church is allowing us as pastors and leaders to disciple everyone to live out what Jesus has saved them into. Being a worshiper of God, being a family member inside the body of Christ, being a steward of their time, talent, and treasure, and finally, being a witness by going and proclaiming the excellencies of Christ Jesus, which means being commissioned or sent out to our neighborhood, our city, and the world. Listen, our vision here at Proclamation Church is to be a diverse family of disciples on mission to see the flourishing of the church, our city, and the world. On October 15th, we are actually going to be walking through a series on this very vision titled Because of Christ. And our hope is that this series will be a catalyst of change for every single person who calls Proclamation Church home. Now, that was a lot, I know, but I promise that's all I have right now. I'll send an email out later this week with this video, as well as some resources on Sabbathing well during our rhythm of rest. In just a second, you're going to hear from me in person this time as we walk through 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 11 through 20. But before we get to that portion of worship, let's stand together in worship for the reading of God's word. 